How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. My art challenge theme of the month was reimagined fairy tales, so naturally, I broke out a juggernaut. I picked up this little figure in Korea back in March, and I've been waiting for the right opportunity to use it. And for some reason, fairy tales seem like the right opportunity. As I was looking over and admiring this little character, I noticed something about their outfit that was familiar to me. It was the collar. I know I've seen this in a fairy tale once before. So I guess that leaves me no other option than to retell Snow White. I started this build by assembling the Juggernaut. I'm not sure exactly what the story is here or how Snow White got on an 11 kill streak to earn a Juggernaut suit, but I'll come up with something as I go. Once the minigun and ammo chain were glued in place, I put the head on a little pin and I set the Juggernaut aside and it was time to figure out the dwarf situation. I picked up this box from Warhammer and I couldn't see the word dwarf anywhere on the box, but I assumed that's what they were given the Scottish accents I heard coming from inside the box when I shook it. They also look like dwarves. There are some nice paint recommendations listed on the little pamphlet that came in the box, but I have another color scheme in mind. This is officially the second, I think, box of Warhammer figures that I've ever opened, but something I remember from last time is the amount of bits and customization options in each box. Figures seem a little bit expensive, but at least they don't short you on the leftover bits. I made a few additional customizations of my own to make sure that every dwarf was unique and had a little extra character of their own. One of those customizations was to add a nice long handle to this double bladed axe. I cleaned up all the little sprue marks and mold lines before slapping all these little dudes on some bases. They're not going to stay on their bases forever, but the bases will definitely make them easier to paint. I then stuck everyone down to some boards and I took them outside where I gave them a Zenithal highlight with some rattle can primers. As you can see here, the Zenithal highlight gave me a lot more contrast to work with. But before painting anything, I needed to work on some terrain for them to stand on. I started with a gesso board and cut up some XPS foam to build up a workable mass that will form the structure of the terrain. I used a utility knife and multiple passes to get a nice clean cut. I glued down the layers of XPS using some foam safe super glue and as you can see here, it is a very nice clean cut. I then began shaving pieces off of the large rectangular cube till I had a nice little hilltop with a gentle slope down to the edges. And once all of the shaving was done, it was time to create a terrain paste. I made my terrain paste using some plaster, a tiny bit of paper mache mulch, some water, and Mod Podge, and some paint. I then mixed the paste thoroughly and applied it to the hill. When it dries, this paste will create a nice protective layer around the foam. And while the base dries, I'm gonna tell you my reimagined story of Snow White and some dwarves. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a princess named Snow White who was in line to become the ruler of the kingdom that she lived in. One day, she had to run away after being warned that her aunt, the Wicked Queen, was plotting to kill her. Not because she was in line for the throne, but because she was better looking. While in exile, Snow White joined a mercenary group and trained as a heavy gunner. She trained for years, hoping that one day she could return to her kingdom and take back the princess life that the evil queen had stolen from her. One day, she decided she had enough training and it was time to go back home. She grabbed her custom juggernaut suit and began walking back to the castle through the enchanted forest. She hadn't been through the Enchanted Forest in quite a while and got a little lost. After working her way through a tight section of trees, she came to a clearing where down below sat a little cottage. She took a few steps toward the house and was almost instantly surrounded by a group of little bearded men waving hammers and axes. One of the dwarves stepped forward and began questioning Snow White to see if she was with the Highway Infrastructure Easement Enforcement Agency. Apparently, the queen was in the middle of a large infrastructure overhaul and needed the land that the dwarves lived on. Snow White said she had never heard of the Highway Infrastructure Easement Enforcement Agency, but was on her way to battle the Queen herself. Upon hearing this, all the dwarves lit up and they asked to join her in the fight. The dwarves introduced themselves as Doc, Happy, Sleepy, Sneezy, Bashful, Grumpy, Dopey, Dane, Willow, Bofer, Glowin, and his little son Gimli. After all the minis had been painted, it was time to finish up the terrain. By this point, the base was nice and dry, the next step was to add some texture. 
I sprinkled on some isopropyl alcohol and I followed that up with some pebbles and some watered down white glue. I then sprinkled on some sand and flocking which finished up the nice earthy texture, but I realized at this point that I hadn't added the trees I wanted, so I went back and added those before moving forward. I got these old Warhammer trees from my Uncle John, which had the perfect ancient enchanted forest look about them. I traced out the shape of the base of the trees and I carved some recesses into the foam using my nice sharp utility knife. And once each of those holes had been cut, I glued the little bad boys in place using more of that foam safe super glue. I patched up the area around the trunks of the trees with more texture paste before leaving it to dry overnight. The next day I came back to it and the glue was all dry, so it was time to add some static grass. I squeezed some static tack around the base and I spread it out even further with a brush trying to keep it looking mostly organic. When the glue had been spread out, I used my static grass applicator from Woodland Scenics to apply the little grass, and then used the tried and true vacuum sock combo to save the leftover grass for later. Once the static tack had dried, I brought the base outside and I primed it black. It's not always necessary to prime the whole thing black and repaint it, but I think I can get everything to look a little more unified and tied together after a quick round of earthy colors from the airbrush, followed by some strategically applied washes, mud effects, and a final sprinkling of some flocking. After all the paint and everything else was dry on the base, I painted the sides of the diorama with matte black, and the last thing to do was to take Snow White and the seven or so dwarves off their painting bases and glue them in place. After all of the minis had been glued into their positions, I called it good. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this build is part of an art challenge that I host for my patrons. They voted on reimagined fairy tales as the theme for the month. Please take a moment to appreciate all of their submissions as well. I also forgot to include this one from last month's art challenge video. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.